Hey, what's up, Blender users? I'm Jonathan, and for a long time I was wanting to upgrade my desktop wallpaper to something minimalistic, and here we are. I settled on this Blender render, and in this video I will show you how to recreate it yourself. Before we even start in Blender, we need a texture for the planet, and there is a great website called Solar Textures, which gives out free textures to download. And for this video I will go with the Mercury 8K resolution texture. And once you click on download, you'll see that a new tab will open and you can just right click and go on save image as. So with Blender open, we need a spherical object to which we can then apply the texture. And right out of the box we have the UV sphere and icosphere. But personally I really like the round cube option, which will add in this almost cube shape and when pressing F9 and giving it a radius of 1, you can see that we get a sphere. I will also give it 16 arcs, so we have some higher resolution to work with. By the way, to actually get this option, you'll need to press F4 and go to Preferences, over to Add-ons and search for Extra Objects and then enable the Mesh option. Okay, great. Now we have this spherical shape. We can now start by opening up another window and going to the Shader Editor. And let's give it a new material, and let's call it Planet Material. Before we worry about UV unwrapping, let's add in an image texture and locate the Mercury texture we just downloaded. I have it saved right here, so let's open it. And with the add-on node wrangler enabled, we can just Ctrl Shift click on this node to preview it. In Material Preview, you can see that we can't see anything, and this is because the texture isn't unwrapped. So let's open up another window and switch it to the UV editor and then go into edit mode, press U and sphere projection. Let's go back to edit mode and roughly scale up the UV map on the X and Y axis so it fits our texture. And you will see that we cannot do this perfectly, but we're just gonna do it the best we can. So I will leave it at this. And now, in Material Preview mode, you can see that the texture pretty much applies perfectly. Except this little seam right here, but this will be in the back and so not noticeable. Now we can add a light and then continue with the displacement. So first of all, let's switch to Cycles. And now we can just add in a sunlight, move it back and move it up and then rotate it so it is facing the planet. So now that we have the light added, we only need to adjust its strength and angle. And for my final render, I chose a strength of 10 and an angle of 45. Let's go into rendered mode and preview how it looks. And you can see right now that the light isn't affecting our planet. And this is because we are using an emission shader to preview the texture. So let's just plug the texture into the principal BSDF shader and preview that. And now you can see that in front view, we get this nice edge light on the planet. We can also shade it smooth by right clicking and in cycles change the world background to black. So what I now want to do is to add micro displacement. For this we need to change the feature set to experimental and next we want to select the round cube, add in a subdivision surface modifier and set it to adaptive subdivisions. What we also want to do is go under material settings and change displacement to displacement and bump. And to actually see the final displacement, we need to add in a displacement node into the shader editor, connect the color output to the height and the displacement to the displacement. Now if I go into rendered mode, you can see that we get this abstract shape because the scale is way too high. I'll set it to much lower to 0.01 and have a look at it like this. And you can see that we now get these nice detailed bumps all over the planet. And that is also everything I will do for the planet. I now want to add in rings around the planet to just make the render a little bit more interesting. So for this, we'll use the circle geometry. So let's add in a circle, scale it up to about the size you want your rings to be. And then with Ctrl and 3, we can add in a subdivision surface modifier and with it selected, press Ctrl and A to apply it. Now we can go into edit mode and with E and S extrude the circle inwards. And now we can just add in another material. 
and then with Shift and A, add an A gradient texture. Again, we can preview it like before, and you can now see that in the material preview mode, we get this gradient. Now what I want to do is to add an A texture coordinate node and connect the object output into the vector input. You can now see that this moved the center of the gradient to the center of the object. And we can use this with a spherical gradient. And now we can use a color ramp and this spherical gradient to add details to the rings. So let's add in a color ramp. But you'll see that we actually have an issue and this is that the right handle only affects the gradient once we are at the center. So we need to remap the gradient's values. For this we can use a map range node and just remap it from 0 to 0.5. And now we can use the entire color ramp to control the rings. What I did was I set this to B spline for a gradient I liked most. And then I just added in a lot of different handles with different lighting values, just like this. And then went ahead and fed this output into the alpha channel input of the principal PSDF. And you'll see that this doesn't do anything in Eevee, but in cycles, we now see our rings. Of course, these rings are way too harsh, so let's add in another color ramp, which we can now use to adjust the opacity of the rings to something like this. And yeah, that's basically it. You can now just add in a camera to wherever you like it, and maybe play around with the lighting so you get a result you're happy with. For the final render, I of course adjusted the color ramp of the rings to make them a lot more detailed and you can see that it now looks something like this. But this really is just down to personal preference and what you like most. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this short video, I hope you learned something and we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.